What's up, everyone? This is another episode of the award-winning fan show. I'm your host, as always, the T-Man, Richard T-Man. I am in a great mood. The order has been restored. You see me donning the gold and the red. Happy 49ers Day to all of you. This is actually a rare Tuesday recording that we're doing this the man to my right in the other box he's a man who when you go to the gym uh, late at night and you hear those weird grunting noises that's him that's malcolm <laughs> father malcolm what's going on man <laughs> hey too much brother hey, too much i like to think of it more as like a uh a battle cry you know <laughs> battle cry. <laughs> <laughs> no man, i'm doing great man good to, good to be back as always he is especially relieved because this is now episode 484, and now that we're recording, he can officially take down his punishment post on Insta. Dude, the, the comments uh -huh. alone were worth it. I just want to know, when you first threw that up, like how long until you started getting the DMs and the comments and had to explain uh -huh. yourself again? <laughs> Rich, look, man. <laughs> this had to be a record time to get like interaction for real. Because as soon as it went up, I put my phone down. The second I set it down, I started hearing the phone tinging and beeping and stuff. I'm like, man, <laughs> not even a full five seconds. I'm like, this is crazy. And on top of that, it's just it got to the point where people just knew like how how hard I go for the Redskins or the Washington Commanders. And, uh, you know, they were just like, yeah, this had to be a bet. It had to be a bet. No way. There's no way you did this on your own accord. So I was like, man, see, the real ones know. But man, all the same, it hurt. It was it was terrible, man. Please don't make me do that again. <laughs> well, we're going to start getting some suggestions for Pick the Punishment. Already gotten a few. I do have uh, Malcolm's already picked out. Uh, spoiler alert oh, as far as um, how, how this last pick <laughs> went. But we'll get to that shortly, of course, all with right. uh, part of our show. But, yes, order has been restored. Malcolm, of course, in his trusty commander's gear, a team that's changed its name more times than it's been in the postseason the last decade. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to us, man. Don't do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then me donning the glorious red and gold uh, on 49ers Day 4 9. Mm -hmm. And today's drip also includes NXT hat. My man, uh, you know him as Javier Bernal. He is in NXT. I got this hat when we went to Orlando and actually saw him wrestle in NXT live. But on this day two years ago, he won his first NXT match. So props to him. And uh, he's still trucking. So we hope to see bigger and better things for my man. You, like I said, you know him as Javi. I know him as Randy. Uh, he played a little bit of indoor football fun fact so with the mm. wyoming mustangs but anyway so malcolm it was a long weekend this is a rare tuesday recording that we're doing this you're screwing everything mm. up as far as my schedule goes <laughs> and whatnot but uh we start yeah, these episodes with the good the bad and the funny so malcolm take it away what's your good bad and funny my man yeah man for sure man first off i mean I, who would i be if i wasn't screwing stuff up for you rich you know <laughs> I gotta give you a hard time at any chance I get. Uh, you know, I've I've just been watching a lot of sports as I always do, especially this week. It's been very exciting. I would say for the good, uh, kind of piggybacking off of what I said last week about the uh the women's NCAA uh, you know, March Madness and everything. Um if you're if if you're anything like me and you follow uh college basketball, you would know that the men's uh UConn team uh took it away over Purdue uh yesterday. Um beat them for and they, they got their second consecutive championship, NCAA men's championship, which is cool. Uh the ratings were super high, which uh was good to see as well. But I thought the coolest part about that was even though the ratings for the men's basketball weren't were at a record high uh and that they're higher than they've been in some years. Uh, the women's basketball still beat them out. I think over it was about four million more viewers in the wow. uh, South Carolina versus the Iowa um, NCAA. Uh, like I said, the March Madness tournament to close it out. It was really cool, man. And like I said last week too, is it's really cool to see just how sports are growing and changing over the years. You know, um, just a, a little over a decade ago, it'll be a far cry to see. Uh, anywhere close to a full house in NCAA, the the women's tournament, 
But now, you know, you have celebrities coming, you have uh, people just making plans just, just months in advance to see these games. And I think it's the coolest thing ever, man. It's a good thing to see for uh, sports as a whole. For the bad, uh, you know, I hate to, to bring it to injuries, but, I mean, that's just a part of sports. I was tuning in the UFC Vegas 90. Chris Curtis uh, left the, the fight, the main event, on a stretcher. Damn. He was uh he he finished the he finished the fight luckily, but uh yeah uh not too long after they they made a decision he he fell to the ground clutching his leg with uh he thinks it was a uh torn what do you say torn hamstring, and um you know we won't know for sure until he gets the MRI I think uh tomorrow, but uh yeah man that's 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 always bad to see and on top of that Dana White was uh asked about it and everything, he said that um you know. We hate to see it, but much like the NFL drop tackle rule, you know, they're probably going to have to make some some alterations to the rules and stuff in UFC, which uh, makes it hard on the fighters and hard to watch as a fan. Because you know, the more rules and stipulations you put on stuff, the the more the less the less fluid it is. It's a lot more. Uh, it seems a lot more controlled than we would like to see out of a sport. You know, as for the uh, funny. Kind of took it to your room a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it tuned into uh, WrestleMania. There you go. <laughs> it was it Sunday? <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the the streamer Astro Speed, but he was on there. It was it was kind of a crazy little wacky moment where uh, he faced off against Randy Orton and got uh, RKO. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the backstory was behind it, but I just thought it was cool to see just to kind of, you know, uh, incorporate the younger generation into wrestling. Now, I, I noticed that a, a lot of younger guys don't watch it as much as I did or probably yourself, you know, growing up. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, that was that was a good way to get them kind of engaged and, you know, get a little – reach out to a couple more uh, demographics and fan bases. It was just cool to see that. It was it was It was definitely funny to see. <laughs> it was uh there was a lot of um comedic value this year at wrestlemania both nights so i appreciate mm -hmm. that but uh yeah that uh that was some good stuff uh and that's actually a good segue into my good bad and funny so my yeah. good was wrestlemania so for two weeks in a row now wrestling so <laughs> good so good yeah. cody rhodes finished his story there were legends that came back. There were a bunch of titles that changed hands. Um, Sami Zayn. Uh, there was a lot of long title reigns that ended. The only long one that didn't was uh, Rhea Ripley. And sorry, spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't seen it yet. But no, it was it was so good that, in all honesty, like if a person wanted to have like that near perfect ending of like a pay per view, this WrestleMania, like I could honestly see myself being like I'm. You know, I could retire from watching wrestling, but here's here's the catch. Here's the hook is that it's the first of this new Triple H led era. And I'm so curious and intrigued to see like where it goes now that, of course, I'm going to start tuning in again. But it's mm -hmm. it was one of those storybook endings pun intended that you don't get a whole lot of um and they did this one really well so props to wwe and congrats to cody rhodes bailey Sami Zayn, uh our truth and miss <laughs> and all those guys that won everybody that wore eagles colors won <laughs> wrestlemania weekend which is great for them because eagles fans hadn't seen a whole lot of winning lately um so <laughs> that, that was good for them uh, my bad it is Malcolm it's screwing up my schedule. Uh, I had to pivot a few <laughs> things here, <laughs> but uh, also congrats to, to Malcolm. Uh, we've had to scrap our first interview. Uh, we before um, Malik Duncan last week, we actually interviewed one of my favorite kickers. And then it was just a, a friendly reminder really to me that I had stepped away for long enough that not everybody knows me to the degree that mm -hmm. I had hoped. I mean, at this point, coming back so many episodes i, I knew i was just going to be cashing in favors really <laughs> and so I, I cashed one in and the interview went 
great. It was a fantastic interview. And then he said, Hey, we got to scrap it. Try again later. And I said, okay. You know, I said, if, uh, if your coach wants to call and talk to me, um, I'm more than happy to like, it, that's the thing is communication. Like all you got to do is just like, if the, the things that could be avoided, if people just talk to each other, there, there's a yeah. list. Um, but no, in all reality, uh, it's not, uh, Malcolm is not the bad. The scrapping the interview is not the bad. Uh, it was just, <laughs> it was funny because it's kind of like more of his initiation process you know it's like yay you know we're hazing you <laughs> you know it's a rite of passage to do a great interview and then have it scrapped but really um still on wrestling the bad is is the stuff like logan paul pat mcafee and bad bunny and i i understand that logan paul is very talented works very mm-hmm. hard i understand pat mcafee um has worked very hard i understand that even bad bunny when he wrestled at their puerto rican uh pay-per-view event or whatever they're called now um that he also has worked very hard but it's like you know on the two-year anniversary of my friend getting his first win in nxt their developmental it really just rubs me the wrong way to see these guys um skip the line so to speak to Mm -hmm. see logan paul with his influence with his money go and skip the line like didn't even have to go through nxt and he's a champion and he shows up once a month you know because he's part-time but he owns prime and they're partners now and then pat mcafee who's mainly on commentary but he has wrestled in matches before and i'm not knocking people that crack the code to riches and fame i mean in all honesty if you have enough money to buy a ring to set up in your shed or your garage or your workshop or whatever at your home and practice wrestling. I mean, more power to you. I'd do that if I had enough money to I've, I've always wanted to wrestle, but I think having watched for so long and having a friend now in the industry and following the Indies and having friends work their asses off week after week, night after night for, for like 40 bucks a match or whatever. Mm-hmm. And just for them to get passed up because guys have, 4 million Twitter followers or because they have a lot of money or they have their own show. It just, I I don't know. It's, it's not a good look for wrestling because there's already been this long stigma about it that, Oh, it's fake. So anybody can do it. This doesn't help like throwing Logan Paul and Pat McAfee into matches that does not help that stereotype that anybody can wrestle. So again, Mm -hmm. not taking anything away from the time that they've put in, but it's, it's just seeing them, on the stages and at the level that they are sometimes just really rubs me the wrong way because part of the reason that I started the fan show and why we cater so much to the indoor football world is because of guys like Malcolm and my buddy Javier Bernal and all the other people in the league that, you know, were just on the wrong side of luck and they got hurt at the wrong time or they went to too small of a school and they continue to work their ass off. But then there's guys Mm -hmm. skipping the line because of, who they know or who their coach was or what school they went to or this or that. And this was made to be a platform for them to get more exposure. And so I'll always be that guy because truth be told me and the fan show have also been that guy, you know, I've never had a lot Mm -hmm. of money, never had a lot of influence or a lot of followers. Everything that I've done has been the process of building it from the ground up. So that's my soapbox for that. I, you know, like I said, it's, it's tough because I understand what they bring to the industry, but I mean, my God, if you had a lot of money, you know, like you could do a lot of things. Malcolm, if you had, you know, let's just say you, you win one of the smaller lottos, like you have a lot of money. Like, what are you going to do with that money? What am I going to do with the money? Man, that's a that's such an open-ended <laughs> question, Rich. I, I, I could think of, I could think of the bad answer, <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's, I guess the giver in me would find a way to try to, you know, help benefit somebody else with it. But um I definitely I definitely uh see where where you're going with it. You know, it's kinda like I guess the dark side of what that what that, uh what my I guess uh funny was. You know, there there there's a side where it's like kind of publicity driven where you want to bring more viewership from a different kind of crowd. But at the same time, it does snub those guys who have been working for it for so long. And it's 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 uh it's it, like you said it's just it's not really it's not really cool and it kind of um it's like a slap in the face for the guys who you know did it the the quote unquote right way you know so I mean I feel that a hundred percent I and I I did I definitely didn't look at it that way but 
Yeah, for sure. I, I hear you 100%. <laughs> All right. So my funny, though, um, not the chat, surprisingly. Nothing from the chat. Yeah. In fact, um, there was none of my favorites in the chat this week. So <laughs> okay, that okay. means one, one of a few things. Either one, they blocked me. <laughs> They they blocked the fan show account on YouTube. That so that's that, that's the first that's the first possibility. Second yeah. one is that they were too busy maybe watching WrestleMania night one to to tune in on YouTube and chat, or they had other things going on, or maybe didn't even watch the show where I mentioned them to know to comment. Yeah. But still, like I said, they were nowhere to be found. So not just no mention of me, but they weren't in there at all. Or the third possibility, my personal favorite is that uh, they learn their lesson, they know I'm right. <laughs> because <laughs> you know as well as I do that if you call somebody out on something and they can't argue it with you, they won't say anything. Um, and there's been a few times already in the four episodes that we've been back where I've called people out and have heard nothing. And so I know that... <laughs> One, they were watching to begin with, so they had to have watched since. And if they can't argue what I'm saying, then they know I'm right. And uh, it's it's funny because we're just going to keep going down the list probably and just checking them off, you know, who's starting shit now. <laughs> but that's, the, that's the sweet victory right there. Man. <laughs> that is. Uh, my real funny, though, is power rankings. Um, my uh, yeah. go go power rankings that I released today. I did the first one last week, but it was just text. Today, I actually put together a graphic. It's Power Rangers theme. I personally love it. I think it's great. Got a lot of really good feedback on it. But power rankings, I have a love hate relationship with them because I understand the purpose is to get people talking, um, you know, but at the same time, people get so triggered by something so irrelevant really power mm -hmm. rankings like they they have no bearing on a team on the season on postseason implications nothing like that no bearing whatsoever but yet right. people if you put their team three instead of two or five instead of four they they go off on you in fact last week somebody in the comments said uh, mass at three was laughable. And I was like, how is it that your team being in the top three after three weeks of play is laughable? Like <laughs> that's, that's pretty good to be top three after that long. Oh, but, yeah. um, another funny story for Malcolm is that I actually pissed off an entire team with my power rankings <laughs> one year. It was uh, the Spokane <laughs> empire. The second year I did a power rankings the week before they played the Wichita Falls Nighthawks, which was Billy Back's team at the time. And I had put Wichita Falls ahead of Spokane. And I think I put them number one because they had a really good strength of opponent going. And yeah. I got a lot of kickback for it um, because Arizona was in the league now. And I think they were mm -hmm. the champs. And um, they're just like, how, you know, the champs, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, but who have they played? Like the Nighthawks. And this was like four or five weeks in. So they, there was some samples there. And so. Yeah. They played each other. Spokane lost, heartbreaking fashion. Like, it was a neck-and-neck neck game. But then they lost in the final seconds. And I posted on Facebook. I said, and that's why I had Wichita Falls at number one. Now, it was meant to be a clapback to everybody that called me crazy for not having Arizona at number one. But apparently, mm -hmm. I started getting texts and DMs from the players on Spokane being like, dude, what the hell? Like, we thought that you were with us, but you only like us like when we're with. I had to apologize to an entire team, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> there are some that are still <laughs> upset about it to this day. There are some that have still given me crap about it when we catch up, you know, from time to time. And this is years I removed. Believe. All over power mm -hmm. rankings. So we can add that to my list of, like, times that I got in trouble without even trying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know for me i i i do them because one i i never like to get um rusty creatively and uh yeah. i wanted to do them because i wanted to make something new and then have a uh a theme for it and so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking i was just like well there's 16 teams i could do like a throwback to to the myspace top eight but then if your team's not in that top eight <laughs> now now you're looking at comments and dms from people just like oh it's like okay <laughs> like chill out um but then i was like okay well if we do power rankings like power like how do we how do we do power and i was just like <laughs> power rain and i was like oh rangers okay so we did the power rangers yeah. spin 
And I remember when I was done with it and posted it, my wife, you know, Danja, she's just like, she's just like, it looks freaking fantastic. And, and she said, <laughs> you know, there's going to come a time where all these leagues and teams that passed up on you because either they wanted to be the face or they didn't want to pay you what you were worth are going to be like, damn, like we really could have had something. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I can't turn it off. <laughs> uh, bro, hey, I agree wholeheartedly, Rich. I've said, I've said it before and I say it again, man. You got a talent like no other, man. It's just that I like to think it's that childhood wonder and you, you just a, a, a big kid that never grew up, you know, but that's a great thing, man, for real. I mean, it shows in the, in the graphics you make in the, uh, just your creative mind. So, I mean, yeah, I'm a, I was a big fan of that power ranking too. I mean, it was really cool. We'll see if Malcolm's head ends up on a power ranger for one of them someday. <laughs> Hopefully that's my, that's my goal. <laughs> Wow, Malcolm's mug says not beer. I love it. <laughs> it's not his world's greatest boss mug. It's a full on tumbler that says not beer. <laughs> See, look, I, a little backstory behind this. I thought I I thought I had to specify, you know. I had one of my guys, um, I posted a uh one of the one of the stories that you you uh from the previous episode. And they saw me sipping out of my mug. A guy asked me, is that a, what are, what are you drinking, bro? What is that? I said, um, <laughs> <"That's> tea? <laughs> is it tea? He was like, yeah, no, I thought you were drinking like some some beer or something. I was like, out of a coffee mug? <laughs> so I, I don't know what, the, I didn't know what to be more, uh, you know, offended about whether you thought I would be drinking. I couldn't wait till after the episode to, to have a beer or that I'm drinking out of a coffee. So I'm like. You know, let's just let's just mitigate that, and I just put my little sign here. To, you know, let everybody know that I'm not drinking beer. This is a family friendly show, so here we are. Oh, please, family friendly. That's that's like loosely interpreted, <laughs> but I did like. Uh, speaking of of which, um, kind of, uh, there was uh, a comment by Triple H at his press conference after WrestleMania. He said, "You know, if we're having fun doing it, you're gonna have fun watching it." And I believe that that's that's for us here on the show. You know, if we're having fun doing it, people should be that's having right. fun watching it. I can't say that for everybody, but um, I think we've done <laughs> a fairly good job so far. <laughs> I like to think so. I like to think so for sure. <laughs> All right, so that's our good, bad, and funny for the weekend. We'll see what this next week has in store for us. Again, congratulations to uh, the South Carolina women's basketball team and the UConn men's sure. basketball team. This was like the first year in a long time that I didn't do a bracket at all. Um, and I, I didn't follow it really, and it was crazy. But congrats to, uh, to those teams that won. I know George Kittle, because Iowa lost, has to – Debo is going to pick him out something because South Carolina won. So that should be interesting for next NFL season. little teaser there. All right, Malcolm, we had week four IFL action, five games. And uh, wow. So we said going into it that we had talked so much about offenses and finding their rhythm and getting in sync with each other and building that chemistry that I felt this was going to be the week that we turned our attention to the defenses and they did not Disappoint. The first game was oh. the Northern Arizona Wranglers. They are two and mm-hmm. one now, and they defeated San Antonio Gunslingers fifty-seven to fifty. Gunslingers fall to zero and two. Jones, man, this dude. I need to quit picking against Northern Arizona. Like you need to quit picking Duke City. Like we just <laughs> gotta stop, man. <laughs> But he had, I mean, he went off. He had five passing TDs and three rushing TDs, 11 of 13 for 152 yards. The dude is a serious stud for the Wranglers. McCorker, his hat trick unfortunately ends. He did have two touchdowns, though. He just did not get the third, but it was a passing or receiving and a rushing touchdown. Uh, Castronova, though, um, 199 yards. He had five touchdowns passing a rushing touchdown and then an interception, but he was sacked three times. So there we go. The defenses, we're starting to see them step up hard to, you know, get in the end zone. If you're on your back, looking up at a big defender. So um, like to see 
how things develop with that. I still think gunslingers are not going to be an easy win, despite them being one of five teams that is winless right now. There are five winless teams in the IFL right now going into week five and five undefeated teams. We'll talk about that after this here in a little bit. Then Bay area, the champs, they go into Jacksonville and get it done man 48 to 24 so they go to 0 and 2 jacks drops to 0 and 3 neil 13 to 18 for 148 yards four tds sugar shane simpson two rushing touchdowns two receiving touchdowns and then uh tavon grant five tackles for him i mean this was a team that looks like a reigning defending champion in a league. I mean, they were getting it done. So props to them. And then Tucson, they go on the road for the second time. They get the win over Duke City, 56-49. So they're 1-1 one and one in Duke City, drops to 0-3. Mitchell, 15-18, uh, 153 yards, three passing touchdowns, four rushing touchdown so marshall talked this kid up and he's a rookie who's lighting it up on the field right now good for him um he did have a touchdown to three different receivers so wow uh, that's hard to do in the indoor game sometimes kilgo had 126 yards four touchdowns but two picks again um so you mentioned last week malcolm that quarterback issue i'll just go ahead and ask you right now you know how long do you continue to ride with your quarterback uh, even though you're facing tough opponents. I don't think Duke City's schedule has been easy by any means. In fact, if you give them an Iowa or a Sioux Falls, it could be a very much a, a two-in-one team at, at this point. So how long are you still going to ride with Kilgo, and what's going to be your decision maker? Not much longer, Rich, to be honest with you. Um, I kind of had this conversation with my my older brother. He said the same thing you did. Why do I keep picking Duke City? I think my heart's still over there for some odd reason. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, man, we were talking about NFL ball not so long ago, and I told him uh, that I think the hardest position to play in football, period, is quarterback for a losing team because it's, it's literally nothing you can do right, you know, unless you're – turning the, the the franchise around right then and there, then you're always looking at it as the bad guy. You know, you're a captain of a sinking ship. And Javin Kilgo is that right now, you know. Um, <clears throat> he does a lot of good, but that's always overshadowed by the fact that you said, like like you said, they're 0-3 now. Um, he's thrown six interceptions in, what, three games? It's, it's, it's crazy, you know. Um, I saw that they they brought in a new guy too, uh, from, who who formerly played with the DC Defenders of the former XFL. So I'm 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 wondering what kind of pressure that's putting on him, and uh, it's just going to be interesting seeing how they go about that going forward. Okay, so you feel like maybe one more game, um, you know, win win or lose, it's really going to be poor uh, performance base to, to see if you if you stick with them or not i i can i can agree with that assessment i will i will say because like i said these first three weeks i mean the most any team has under their belt is you know three games and it, mm -hmm. it's week four we're going into week five and still no nobody's played the whole stretch in fact i think four of the top five teams i have in my power rankings didn't even play uh this last weekend so it's uh, it was a lot for the middle and the bottom to get work done, but this is still technically the preseason because camp is very short and then there are no preseason games. You just kind of yeah. get thrown right into it. So yeah, I would say one more game, you know, and um, it's going to have to be a damn near perfect game really uh, in a loss in a win. I, I don't know how many mistakes you're willing to overlook as a coach, but I guess we're just thankful that we're not in that situation <laughs> as a coach to have to, figure out what's you know what's it going to be uh, how do you decide yep. that so keep an eye on duke city and then we had green bay they go into quad city just like malcolm predicted and got it done 32 24 so green bay is one back to back they're two and one quad city drops one at home they're one and one but it was not max myler whose name would be called as far as lighten it up it was skylar perry so Max Myler, I'm told he was inactive that game because of uh, a stinger in his back. Um, talked to Coach Roberson. He said that he's going to be okay. You know, he'll be back. 
But, man, Skylar Perry, uh, 5 of 9 for 59 yards, so not much through the air. He did have a touchdown. But on the ground, 15 rush attempts, 67 yards, and two TDs. So this is one of those TJ Edwards-looking kind of offenses when it's Perry. Um, Myler did some stuff on the ground, too, but he was also able to get it done through the air, you know, primarily. Mm -hmm. Like, that was his first go-to. But... It's weird. I've never seen statistics like that in a win. Uh, so few passing attempts, completions, and yards, and then uh, you have that on the ground. Kegel, though, had two TDs uh, rushing. Erickson, uh, for Quad City, though, he got sacked three times. So, again, defense stepped up big time. It was a lower scoring game than I think we were all used to, but it was a great game, uh, two rivals going at it. So I think Erickson just chalked this up to a bad game. But my question for you, though, Malcolm, is, you know, all week, Quad City, their defense is prepping for Myler. And then you find out game time. And I don't know how long before game time. I found out on the broadcast that he was inactive yeah. for that game. So most of the time, you guys are studying film. You're learning what kind of looks they go with, what certain looks mean. Maybe even if a, you know, if a quarterback bobs his head twice before the snap, that means he's throwing the ball. Um, I don't know how in-depth it gets. But for you as a defender, I mean – what all have you has gone into preparation for a quarterback and what happens when you find out that it's not going to be that guy at that position that you're facing off against and how do you adjust? Well, I'll tell you, Richard does throw the game off quite a bit, man. Cause it's that serious. Like we really look at every little thing, every little tendency, whether he drops his back foot when he's uh, setting up for, you know, to drop back for a pass or if he, you know, his stance is a bit wider if he's going to hand off the ball. Whatever the case is, we literally spend countless hours during the week watching film, just looking for the smallest tendencies that will give us a leg up on uh, that specific person. So, you know, when when they found out, I'm not sure how soon they found him, but when uh, they did see that Max Myler wasn't playing, I'm sure it did throw a wrench in the plans. But all the same, you gotta play ball. You know, you can't you can't use that as an excuse to to not you know do your job. So I'm sure they probably didn't tweak the game plan much. They probably figured since they're two quarterbacks within the same system, it's not going to be much of a difference. But it, there was indeed quite a difference. You know, just given the fact that he was primarily a, a running quarterback. So I couldn't I couldn't tell you whether or not they didn't prepare for that. But uh, it it certainly does, you know, kind of kind of uh change things a little bit, you know, especially when they see his style of play and how he's getting going. They're probably for for a good period of time, you know, just without an answer. So, yeah, man, I feel for them on that. Okay, all right, fair enough. So that was score one for Malcolm, and then I had one with the uh, <laughs> Tucson over Duke City game. So we're tied one oh and one God. at this point with one game left to go, which brings us to Iowa and Tulsa, the Barnstormers and the Oilers. I, uh, it was uh, Tulsa's home opener, great crowd, great uniform. They were playing the camouflage game, Malcolm. They had all black uniforms on a black turf, man. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> What is Jones up to? So that game, 31 Iowa, 39 Tulsa. So Iowa drops to 0-2, Tulsa 1-1. One one. Daniel Smith, 120 yards, 11 rushing attempts for 57 yards and three TDs on the ground. So clearly doing a great job there. Peterson had 198 yards with three touchdowns, but also had three interceptions. So that was tough. Again, this is a team, I believe, struggling to find its identity and it's just going to take more time unfortunately but roman morris four tackles and two of those three interceptions so the defenses like i said and like we discussed last week going into this one it is now their game it is the defense's job yeah. to basically be the difference between a win and a loss through four weeks we have five teams undefeated the pirates the panthers the Strike Force, the Nighthawks, and the Fighters, and five winless teams. Teams still looking for that first W, the Gladiators, the Gunslingers, the Sharks, both new to the league, the Barnstormers, and the Sioux Falls Storm. So this uh, mm -hmm. next week, I think, could be a real turning point for some teams. Uh, could spell disaster for others as far as uh, we could have seen the last highlights from some players, uh, specifically at the yeah. quarterback position. 
I don't like to think that coaches are necessarily on the hot seat when it comes to indoor ball and starting off 0-3 or even 0-4. I mean, this is a game where you're not given the kind of resources or time that you are in the NFL. So I think it, uh, you know, Iowa, they're under their head coach now for second year in a row. There has been technically three head coaching changes since Dixie Wooten won that championship with them in 2018. If you count the time that Amir Ishmael was announced as the head coach because he did he did do tryouts, he did do camp, he did assemble a roster, and then he took another job um, and to Les Moss. So, I mean, there's there's it's going to be some adjusting. I feel for the guys, I really do. So hopefully teams like Iowa, uh, Duke City can turn it around. Maybe this is that week that they do. We'll get to that with our week five predictions and i get to pick malcolm's punishment for the second week in a row so we will see how (laughs) that looks and of course we want your suggestions for the pick your punishment i have a great one for malcolm this time because (laughs) the interview we had to scrap that person malcolm texted me uh yesterday and said hey i got all my picks right (laughs) and for those of you that don't know the joke at the end of that interview uh, because of the punishment that I had picked for Malcolm, which he gets oh. to take down now off his Instagram, uh, the person we interviewed had on the show said, hey, if I get all my picks right, Malcolm should be exonerated from his punishment. And I said, this is not a lifeline. There's no phone <laughs> a friend here. But because he did and because he reminded me that he did, I will take it easy on you. Um, you will because back to back, I'm not going to make it worse. That's too soon, too quick. Um <laughs> So we will do that uh, when we talk about week number five with more of the fan show and uh, to help us discuss week five before Malcolm and I do our pick em is a man who uh, you come to know and love if you're in Titletown, Green Bay, Wisconsin. He is the head coach of the Blizzard. It is Corey Roberson. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. How you doing? Uh, doing well, doing well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First coach we've had on since the fan show has been back. We just had uh, Malik Duncan on last week to talk Quad City before that matchup. I went with the home team. Malcolm picked Green Bay. And, uh, you know, it's um, good problems to have, though. I I don't like being put in a situation where I got to pick between teams I like. But thankfully, you guys have both been good enough this season where it's just like hey whoever wins that's that's great really because um you guys have come a long way like what what stands out to you looking at the 2024 green bay blizzard team uh unselfishness um you know we've had some guys in the past it was it was selfish um they they, they were selfish and um it was it was me before we uh you know i think we we we've settled and weeded that out um so you know uh and then having a returning quarterback i think that's always good you know we got to start with that position the past few years with being you know having a down year that position was it was a new person every year uh so you know having a guy back uh in year two um is is always great but you know putting the right pieces around him uh you know it's key yeah, you guys have played some really great football um, this season. I know that that first loss uh, to Mass was tough, and and I remember telling Malcolm uh, when we did the show after that, I said, this is a team that, for whatever reason, they've had the hardest time playing all four quarters, like 50, 58, 59 minutes, but not all 60. And then when you guys finally got that first win and now this second win against Quad City on the road, I mean, you guys are playing very well both sides. Um, this time you did it without Max Myler, um, who was inactive. You did it with Skylar Perry, who was amazing on the ground. But before we talk about your quarterbacks, what is it uh, that – really has been the difference maker for this team as far as you know playing all 60 minutes and not coming up just shy of a win and now being on the right side of the wins and losses columns yeah uh you know that first game we played 59 minutes and and 45 (laughs) seconds Um, (laughs) uh, no we uh i I think leadership um you know a a player-led team is, is is important and I think we got the right leaders in place, um, you know, and, and it's my responsibility and my job to coach them up, coach everyone for sure, but coach them up and and make sure that they lead the team in the right direction as well. So I would just say leadership. You know, we had we, we returned some guys in the secondary and, I, I, you know, I thought 
in my eyes, which, you know, I, I had to get better. Um, our, our secondary last year was probably the worst secondary that we had. Um, and to bring a couple of key position, key guys from that secondary back and, and see their growth was is, is remarkable. Uh, the D line play, um, you know, talk about them. Them guys, you know, they they getting after it. So um, especially uh, the big guy in the middle. You know as well as I do that people, fans, and and communities can be um, one your your biggest fan, or they can be very unforgiving when it comes to the success or even lack thereof at, at this level in this game. We have two brand new faces to the league in the Jacksonville Sharks, last year's NAL champion, San Antonio Gunslingers. Neither has won a game. Jacks, uh, they've had a pretty tough schedule to start off their inaugural season with the IFL. But then, you know, you have people in comments saying that their coach just, you know, he's not it, that their roster, that they went cheap or, or whatever you want to say. And then you have a Duke City who's been in the league for a while, and they have a, a quarterback who's, you know, doing well until he's not, you know, making some poor decisions, a couple more turnovers or interceptions. So for you, because I know that you've been there as far as just trying to figure out what the identity of your team is, where does it start? And, you know, how, how much pressure is there on you as a coach when we're five weeks in, but the most any team has played is three games. You know, the pressure is always as a coach is to make sure you, you lead in the, the ship in the right direction, right? Um, I think it, it, it starts and stops at the top. You know, I come from the coaching tree, you know, with guys that's, you know, power five football right now. Um, you know, players win ball games, coaches lose them. I understand that that's not always the case, but I also know that it's it's a high percentage. So I think it always starts and stops at, at the top. Um, you know, talk about this game plan that we had last week, right? We had to make some adjustments, um, knowing that, you know, Max was not in. We couldn't do the same thing. Uh, although we did, we had, we just had to switch some stuff up. We had to uh, cater to our, our our who we had our personnel. Um, so I think that's key, being flexible as coaches. Um, you know, to create that identity of what we're going to be that game. Fair enough. Well, Malcolm, you are a big fan of the man in the other box right now. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Anything for Mister Corey Roberson of the Blizzard? Yeah, yeah, for sure, Coach. I mean, um, first off, definitely want to congratulate you on, you know, uh, just this this win this past uh, weekend. And, you know, just what you guys been doing uh, since the season started. I mean, I've, I've been watching pretty closely, and it's, it's, it's looking good over there so far. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, I also, uh, you said a couple things that kind of stood out to me, and I think leadership is probably the, the most important. Um, as a player myself, I know how important it is to have uh, player leadership. You know, it's one thing hearing it from the coach, but if you have guys in your huddle or guys uh, in your position room who who will stay on you just as, as much as the coach will or, you know, just uh, want to win as much as the coach does, you know, it's, it's uh, super important. You know, it drive, that's literally what drives a team, you know. I've seen championship teams ruined by just one guy, you know, so – uh, I mean, I want to commend you on that. That's that's a that's a huge accomplishment to you know weed out those guys to you know and bring back the guys who you feel like can you know assist you guys in your run. And um, you know, it's 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 not an easy thing to do. I could imagine. Yeah, no, that that's that's one of the tough parts, right? Um, you build a relationship with these guys. You uh, you know, to to come to Green Bay and, and compete, right? You know, we know mm -hmm. uh. For, for whatever reason, right? It's the love of the game, but they also, you also have to build that relationship with these young men. Um, and I, and I, you know, when, when, you, when it's time to say goodbye, you know, it's not like you just saying goodbye to, to another guy, you know what I mean? You saying goodbye to someone who you've put time in to try to get to know and, and, and you know, help, hopefully they was getting to know you and who you are. They took a, you know, it, it was trust, right. You know, for them to come and, and drop everything from where they were, wherever they were to come over there. But, you know, it's also a business, right. And it, um, some, some people, you know, you got to get the right people on the, on the bus and the wrong people off. You know, we have tough conversations, uh, the Trinkler family and I, um, we have some tough conversations. I, I think that's what helped us grow you know, you think about what what was it, 2019, when we came in this together and um, we instantly had some success. And, and then, you know, the last three years, we didn't have any, um, especially not as much as we we were hoping for. Um, you know, it's, it's been some tough conversations, uh, but, you know, we've grown together, uh, especially Larry and, and, and I, uh, her husband, Larry Trinkler. 
Um, we've grown. We went through some growing pains. And, um, you know, this I, I think actually you might have been the first person I interviewed when I became the head coach. Actually, you were the first person who interviewed me when I became the head coach. Um, I remember sitting in a, in a parking lot of Shopco Hall that's now tore down, but at the rest center um, speaking with you. It's a uh, it, it's definitely um, is growth and happened within the past four or five years. But, um, you know, we just keep chopping it and, and, and stay in the course with the process. Excellent, man. I'm glad that you guys have uh, that kind of relationship. I, I love it when people stick with, you know, the people that they chose to basically build you know uh it seems like there's a lot of turnover at just about every level but this is a level where you guys just like i mentioned to malcolm earlier you don't have the resources you don't have the time that you know an nfl or even a ufl now has uh, these first four weeks are basically your guys's preseason because it was camp and now the they count you know wins and losses i think that's great that you've had that support fantastic um to see you after all these years again and um it's been fun to watch you and in the green bay blizzard from afar uh i'll ask i don't know how much you can say but max myler obviously was inactive skylar perry did a great job in his absence um is there a severity to it? Like how long will he be away? Can you tell us when he'll be back? Things like that. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, we, we, we found out that we, um, our starting quarterback was out, you know, and it, it, it was, you know, we addressed the team that way, you know, we had to clear the elephant in the room and um, we, we took it head on and we was able to prep all week with knowing that we was going to have Skyler playing and, and Skyler uh, hats off to him. He did a great job stepping in and, um, you know, taking the helm and, and, and led us to victory. So um, I want to make sure that we, you know, he, he, his approach and his preparation and, um, you know, him learning uh, the, the game is, uh, you know, been top notch. So, um, and everything that that young man has been through, but as far as uh, Max, you know, it's, it's, you know, we have to wait and see, um, we'll wait and see where, who, who's going to be on the field at, at, at quarterback that day. <laughs> no, it's not a long term injury. So I, I could say that. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I believe you. I trust you. I know that you've done, um, you know, you've been through worse in Green Bay, but the people of Green Bay, they love you. So we're happy to have you. And that will uh, segue us into our week five predictions. Uh, Malcolm and I make our picks. The loser uh, gets a punishment. Winner gets to pick that punishment. I've got Malcolm's all picked out and ready uh, to announce at the end of this, but um We'll ask you, Coach Roberson, for your um, thoughts, uh, things that you like about both teams and what could ultimately be the difference maker in these games. Uh, you guys get to kind of sit great. back and enjoy the week. Um, uh, off a win, so that'll be great for you guys. So Friday, April 12th, we're back to Friday games now. We have the winless Iowa Barnstormers taking on the undefeated Massachusetts Pirates. Um this is tough for me. I love the Barnstormers, but as I mentioned to Malcolm, I think they're on their technically, officially their third coach since Dixie left after that championship because Amir Ishmael did, you know, he was announced. He did have a camp. He did assemble a roster and then Les Moss took over. And now obviously he's with Northern Arizona. So it's a team that has gone through a lot of identity changes. And I think that's what's the biggest thing missing for them is what is the new Iowa Barnstormers identity look like. So coach, obviously you've played both of these teams. You're very familiar with one of them, but what, what do you like about both teams and what is going to be the difference maker in this game? Tough, tough situation right now happening over there in Iowa, right. You know, with, with, with the losing part, um, you know, Moogs is a good friend of mine. So, you know, I hope he's able to, uh, you know, figure it out and, and get it together. Um, Massachusetts, right? You know, Jawad do a great job of recruiting. Um, he know how to find guys, and um, with, with he put together a, a nice coaching staff as well. And um, having Benefield back, uh, you know, former uh, uh, United Bowl MVP uh, in 2021, you know that that that's key. Um, and I can't stress enough the quarterback position. And then knowing that they uh, have Jimmy Robinson back now, um, it's going to be a tough tale for Iowa. Um, you know, and, and I was still, like you said, they figuring out their identity. They got a new defensive coordinator who's trying to figure it out. You know, my guy TP, uh, Tyrell Pearson over there, you know, who's who's that leader in, on the defensive side of the ball. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be tough for Iowa uh, this, this game. So Moog's a great coach. I think he'll be able to expose that defense for sure. But how consistent mm -hmm. can they be? Okay. All right. Good assessment. Malcolm, last week you were Iowa all the way against Tulsa. <laughs> so who are you taking in this one? <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, I would love to see, like Coach said, I would love to see Iowa and their offense be as explosive that as they as explosive as they could be, you know, um, as we know them to be. But uh, ultimately, like you both said, you know, they're going through some things right now, still trying to find their identity. And uh, football is an unforgiving game, man. It's not going to take it easy on you just because you're not ready. You know, a uh, high school coach of mine used to say, you know, if you're going through something, we'll pray for you before we put you to sleep. You know, so I think that's what Mass is going to do. They're, they're not going to take it easy on them just because they're going through some things. So um, Mass has it together. Iowa doesn't. I think it's an easy, an easy win for Mass. Yeah, I'm going to take Mass too again. I don't have the confidence to pick against them. Um, but, uh, again, they haven't played a team with a winning record all season, with the exception, of course, of Green Bay, but that was the first game of the season. And has Green Bay, obviously, right. has since then gotten another win. So um, their strength of schedule has not been great, not to take anything away from them. But I'm ready for a true test for to see just how good Mass is. Right now, number two on my power rankings. So the next Friday mm -hmm. game, we have – have the gunslingers in action again they're going on the road again to vegas to take on the undefeated nighthawks so again a team that hasn't won all season taking on a team that is in the undefeated column crazy as it might be vegas mm -hmm. looking very strong coach what do you like about the squads and where's the difference uh knowing what uh, you know mike davis and chin and what they've put together over there have my quarterback from last year, uh, well, our Green Bay quarterback from last year, and Jerome, and you know we knew what he was able to do, and he's a playmaker. Um, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a long day, I think, uh, over there uh, <laughs> with San Antonio. So I, I mean, and, and Mike Davis, they put together <laughs> on paper a very good team. I mean, from top to bottom, I mean, you look at every single position. So um, they are loaded. Yeah, we know Vegas can score points, um, but San Antonio can score some points themselves. I think the matchup to watch is going to be the San Antonio offense against the Vegas defense. How how long do you let them stay in the game? Do you even allow them in the game early at all? Um, because uh, it's they're a team, the Gunslingers are a team that you have to play all four quarters against. It's not, I mean, even Jacksonville started to come back, but that one, I think they kind of went to cruise control mode about halfway, you know, mm -hmm. uh, halftime in that one. But I'm going to roll with Vegas at home. Malcolm, who you like? Uh, you know, I hate siding with you, Rich, but <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I got to go with Vegas too, man. Um, you know, uh, like Coach said, uh, they got a special guy over there in Jerome, man. <clears throat> Went through the same school as me, Bowie State. Um, I knew from when I saw him back then, he's a special guy, you know, playmaker, uh, great on his feet, um, getting better week by week throwing, you know, uh, pretty much proved himself as a dual threat quarterback. Um, and also Vegas, the one thing that a lot of people don't really take notice of is their defense. They're really good over there. Um, their cornerback, number three, Roger Chapman, uh, easily the best DB on that team. I could say probably the best DB, one of the best DBs in the IFL altogether. Yeah, I think Vegas is going to walk out of there with a victory. Okay, we both like Vegas, so that leads us to our first Saturday game. Quad City Steam Wheelers, who just suffered a defeat at home against the uh, man in the, that we have on our mm -hmm. show right now, his blizzard, Coach Corey Roberson, and they're going to go into Frisco to take on the fighters. So, Coach, uh, obviously, you know one team very well, just saw them up close and personal. What do you like, and where's the difference here? I mean, I think it's an easy one when you talk about the quarterback position, right? You know, with who mm -hmm. – uh, Frisco have over there the reigning MVP. Um, you you look at the coaches. Uh, you know you got a young coach um, with, with uh, um, Coles over there, and then you have uh, you know a veteran coach and, and Corey Ross. So um, it's gonna come down. I believe it comes down to coaching. Um, I think this this game is gonna be it's, it's who's gonna out coach who. Um, I think both of them had the pieces in place, but. Um, you know, we talked about that valuable position in the beginning. All right, Malcolm, you first. Who are you taking? <laughs> I 100% agree. It's going to be a chess match between the coaches, but the difference maker is that guy over there in Frisco, TJ Edwards, man. Like I said <laughs> the week before, TJ Edwards does TJ Edwards things. So, you know, game changer, man. He's he's a he's a big part of that offense for a reason. I think he's going to prove it again versus Quad City. So I'm taking Frisco. I really want to chalk 
uh, Quad City's <laughs> loss and Erickson's performance to, to just a, a one-off, just a bad day because he looked really good against the Storm uh, for that first win of the season. But um, I... Hopefully a better performance. I don't know if it'll be enough to win. I will take the fighters in this one. Um, so me and Malcolm agree once again. And that's our lone Saturday game, which brings us to Sunday. The Tulsa Oilers taking on the Sioux Falls Storm. Um, Coach, uh, Oilers obviously were a new team last year. They're just coming off a win. Uh, almost had a win in Frisco against those very fighters. And then with Sioux Falls, it's the Andre Fields era. Um, I don't know how much you know about him or this version of the storm, but uh, what do you like? Yeah, we, uh, uh, Andre, Andre, good guy. You know, he's been around the game a long time, long, long time. I, I mean, he played when I played. So he's been on all, a lot of those championship teams. He's been um, their, their guru on the defense, even, you know, behind the scenes for many, many years. So I'm, I'm expecting him to do a great job uh, as they come around um, and start figuring out what their identity is. Uh, Marv, Marv, that team was tough last year. Um, it took us 59 minutes and 57 seconds to finally take the lead in that game. Um, don't, don't ask me how I remember all that, but that was a, a shootout. out. Um, and when we went to Tulsa, so and he brought back some key positions. He brought his coordinator back. Um, and it's just going, you know, which, which team is going to be consistent. Yeah, it's it's tough for me to pick against a team that's already dropped, you know, a, a couple of games early in the season. It's uh, you, there's so much in a name, right? The Storm. It just seems like they they should be just like Arizona, just your go-to pick. But man, I'm rolling Oilers. My man Coach Jones is over there doing great things with uh, with Tulsa. So Malcolm, you might as well just pick the Storm in this one. Save us all some time because you haven't picked Tulsa once yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the crazy thing. As much as I want to go against them this week too, I can't, man. I can't. Wow. Uh, Tulsa, they they're they're catching fire at the perfect time, man. The offense looking good. You know, uh, what's the Daniel Smith looking way more confident, uh, uh, gaining more and more confidence as the weeks go on. So uh, I think I think they're gonna take it home. All right, we both like Tulsa, even though I think deep down Malcolm <laughs> wants to say the storm. Um, but uh, he's under heavy influence right now from me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that'll bring us to another Sunday matchup. Got uh, quite a yeah. few for Sunday. That's the San Diego Strike Force going on the road to take on uh, a well-rested and probably very frustrated Arizona Rattlers team. Um, this is a Arizona team that has dropped back to back for the first time. I don't know, possibly ever. Like that's something that you have to Google because it just doesn't happen mm -hmm. very frequently in San Diego. They look like that, that team that is one of those teams to beat. They're in my top five right now. So coach um, Kevin guy gets three games, two losses. Now a buy is at home against the team that is uh, red hot. I mean, what, what's your takeaway from this matchup? Yeah, no, this is going to be a good one. Uh, you know, Taylor and, and KG, they, uh, I, I'm sure, you know, Nate Davis, quarterback play, right? You know, you talk about the quarterback play. They got a winner over there now in Arizona with uh, coming out of retirement with Brown. So um, it's going to be a, a, a heavyweight bout, that's for sure. Um, and, and, you know, which team is going to be well coached, coach, uh, least penalized, more efficient? You know, that's, not, that's who, who will win this ball game. All right, so Malcolm, I'll let you do the honors first here. Now, I believe Coach Guy said that Sneed was supposed to be back after their bye. I haven't heard any confirmation oh. on that yet. Could still be Lorenzo, but either way, they've you know managed to get by with both very capable, obviously quarterbacks. I think Sneed probably gives them the edge. But what's your pick? Oh, uh, well, either way it goes, I think it's going to be a shootout quarterback wise. Um, <clears throat> with uh, either the guys over there in Arizona. You know, great quarterbacks, um, gunslingers for sure. And as we all know, Nate Davis coming off of what, like an eight, nine touchdown game or something like that. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy, man. It's the crazy quarterback play between the two of them. Uh, I think the difference maker is going to be Nate and the dogs they got over there in San Diego. Uh, so I'm taking them over the Rattlers. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. Um, hmm. Man, I think, wow, am I really about to say this? I think I'm going to take Arizona. <laughs> I think I two, two in a row is bad. Three, I, I don't think that the world could, could continue to exist. Um, San Diego <laughs> is that team. Don't get me wrong. 
But uh, if Arizona is good at anything, it's their defensive play against really good quarterbacks. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to – well-rested at home. If Dalton Sneed's back, I'm going to go with Arizona. I can't believe I'm saying that. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm taking Arizona. Wow. Yes, okay. So that brings us to our week five finale. And that is Sunday again, so no Monday nights. Good for you, Malcolm. We get to record at yeah. a reasonable hour uh, if you're not busy again. <coughs> <laughs> that is I'll when the that. champs, the Bay Area Panthers, on the road again, but not far. Uh, they will go into Tucson to take on the Sugar Skulls, coming off their first win of the season. So, Coach, uh, I mean, these are two teams, very well-coached teams, very good offenses. Uh, Mitchell, for the Sugar Skulls as a rookie, is really lighting it up. Uh, something to appreciate, you know, considering how much the talent is kind of all over the place between here, the AFL, the UFL. So it's good to see rookies come in and do really well um, right off the bat. So uh, what do you like about these two squads? Hey, I'm, I'm going to just talk about their coaching. Um, you got uh, Billy Beck and, and and Kaiser over there, both been head coaches and winners. You got Dixie Wooten and um, Rob Keefe, both been head coaches and winners. Uh, I think uh, you, you just look at the pedigree and, and – and, you know, it's going. This is a heavyweight bout itself. Um, this is you know two two uh, pretty solid teams uh, facing off against each other. But um, you know, I think it, this game is uh, just looking the trenches. I think that's don't tell it all. I agree. Game one in the trenches for sure. Um, whoever can play more mistake free football, if that's even possible. Um, but yeah, the coaching staffs for these two teams are phenomenal. I mean, it's really like it should be against a rule, <laughs> like you know, the veteran rule that we have. It should be you can't have so many good coaches on, on one team or two teams in this case. So uh Let's see. I'm going to go with the champs until further notice. Nothing against Tucson or Billy Back. I think that they've got a very bright future and a great season uh, ahead of them. It was tough for them with that first loss of the season, but, uh, you know, um, this will be a real test for, I think, both squads as far as, like, how good both of them are, you know, uh, and what the future holds as far as the remainder of the season just in five weeks of play. So I'm going to take uh, the champs in Bay Area. Malcolm, you? It's a clash of the Titans here, man. Clearly, like you guys said, the coaching <clears throat> just phenomenal, man. To to uh, you know, IFL Hall of Fame uh, caliber coaching staffs easily. I think uh, the the real difference maker is gonna be something that Coach said earlier uh, in the interview or in the, um, in the episode is uh the leadership, you know. Uh, that veteran leadership on Bay Area, I think, is a bit stronger than uh, you what you got over there in Tucson. Not to say that, you know, Tucson is is lacking in any way, shape, or form, but they're led by, like you said, a rookie. He's doing a phenomenal. Um, I think I read earlier he has, what, like eight rushing touchdowns in just the two games they played, which is crazy. But all in all, you know, uh, Bay Area is led by Daquan Neal, who's – been in this league for um a number of years, won championships and uh just 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 seen his fair share of, of the, the game of football. So, you know, I think that's gonna be what it comes down to ultimately. So I'm taking I'm taking uh Bay Area for sure. All yeah, right. So like, I think uh J J V and varsity right there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. There you I had go. to throw that out there and somebody watching they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I think Malcolm's starting to learn his lesson. We're only different on one game instead of three, like we've been the last couple of weeks. So he's starting, he's, 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 he's as close as he up. can get, you know, without <laughs> blurring the line. He's there. So now it's time to pick Malcolm's punishment. And I said I was going to go a little easier oh, on him God. this week because it's back to back. And the comments alone uh -huh. on his uh, last punishment were well worth it. Um, but <laughs> uh, I tried to get him on tonight. I, I will let you know that right now. But um, you will have to face um, the guys from that omaha team that are on the tulsa oilers and coach jones if i can get them and you will have to apologize for picking against them and, and don't think i'm gonna just let them forget that you're that now you're picking them to win on the road against sioux falls but that you have picked against them not once but twice so you will have to apologize oh, to the boys 
Be sure to let me know whenever that is. I'll, I'll make sure I'm doing something, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever day that falls on. All right, <laughs> I'll make sure I'm busy. <laughs> Yeah, they were busy tonight. Unfortunately, they had they're at a Drillers game, uh, which is another Tulsa team. They're there as a team event. But uh, I, I hit up Pat and Coach Jones yeah. and Montero, and I was just like, "Hey, I need you guys to come on. I got something. I got you guys right. got it that's too." Gonna be, that's gonna be fun, man. Oh my god, that's gonna be cool. All right, so that will be I Malcolm's think, punishment next time. We'd love to hear your suggestions for the pick your punishment for whoever the loser is of the pick em. I did see pie in the face. Uh, we've had um, Malcolm <laughs> dress up, you know, or one of us lip sync to a, a, you know, boy band song or something like that. So there's a few good suggestions out there. We'd love to hear more. But Coach Roberson, thank you so much for joining us here. It's always great to catch up with you, man. I'm so glad you were able to make it. Yeah, no, I appreciate you uh, having me, asking me to come on. I want to say I appreciate you for even bringing the fan show back. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was a huge fan back in the day and well, a few years ago, right? You know, and to have you back, I know you just got to get back into it, but this is this is huge for the game. Yep, I'm happy to be back. Uh, having Malcolm here in the other box with me has been a lot of fun. There's uh, a banter finally to the show. It's not just me talking to myself uh, with my own That's ego awesome. trying to fit into a single box. But, you know, I was thinking about it. So I've got a, a bobblehead of uh, of your guys in a, a ball. And I've got a giant flask somewhere <laughs> that's a blizzard, but I don't have any wearable stuff. I like to mix up what I'm wearing on the show. I don't have a blizzard t-shirt or hat or nothing. I need to send Ryan a hat because I guess he's retiring his. And there are fan show hats. So I need to send him one. Not that he'd wear it on the the strictly blizzness, but um yeah, I gotta I gotta get on the uh getting some wearable blizzard stuff so I can mix it up on the show here. <laughs> Text, text me your sizes and your address. We'll get something sipped out to you this week. All right. Sounds good. And then uh, we'll see if, uh, if Malcolm wants and, to. And Malcolm, if you want something, we got you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Because I don't know if you remember back in, uh, what was it, uh, late 2022, we had a little chat back and forth. I was trying to come over there, but, you know, I guess I went a different direction. I, I, I understand. I, I do. Understand. I do <laughs> recall. I was... I was sitting here the whole time, like Malcolm. Why does name sound familiar? I think, yeah. I, I think, oh man, uh -huh. we talked. I ain't put yeah. it Hopefully, he don't bring this up. And you sure enough just brought it up. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I understand. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. I respect it, but no, I, I'll take some gear for sure. But I get that over to you. Anything's right. better than that commander stuff that he wears on the show, I swear. Uh, this, ain't, this ain't going nowhere. You know that. Malcolm, your stock is going up so much being on the show and talking to these coaches and players. <laughs> you can have your pick of the next place you go once you're fully healed and up in 100%. So this was a great episode, episode 484, which is crazy to think about considering we didn't do one for uh, two years. But, yes, Coach Roberson was uh, – he I was his first interview when he got in here, so it's great to bring back some familiar faces. And you can catch us on all the social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Give us a like. Uh, you can watch us on the YouTube channel, so subscribe. And you can listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio. And, of course, Spreaker and Apple Podcasts. So, for Coach Roberson, for Father Malk, I'm the T-Man, Richard Teeman. This has been another great episode of The Fan Show. We will see you next time.